The House Oversight Committee just voted to subpoena a top official in charge of approving security clearances at the White House after a whistleblower claimed several staffers who were granted clearance had glaring disqualifying issues. But before the vote, some fiery debate from lawmakers. This lady was scared. You hear me? She's scared. She's small in stature. And she, she's already seen what is going on in, in the White House. She was scared to death. And she was afraid, sadly, of our Republican colleagues. First a Saturday deposition, then yesterday a press release after talking to just one witness where you handpick a few parts of her testimony, and now today. Now today we're going to subpoena a guy who just sent us a letter saying he's willing to come here voluntarily. I've been on this committee 10 years. I've never seen anything like this. Oh, please. Never seen anything like this. I haven't. Yeah, you've done it. I haven't. There is an anti-nepotism law in this country that the president has circumvented by having his daughter and son-in-law work in the White House as volunteers. Overturning the security clearances is a choice the commander-in-chief can make. He's the president of the United States. It's not against the law. It's not against policy. There have been no leaks of national security information. It's not like this process has led to classified emails being on an unsecure server. Folks are suggesting that we are conducting foreign relations with folks with security clearances via WhatsApp. I mean, every day that we go on without getting to the bottom of this matter is a day that we are putting hundreds, if not potentially thousands of Americans at risk. I mean, really, what is next? Putting nuclear codes in Instagram DMs? This is ridiculous. We need to get to the bottom of this. And in order to do that, we have to issue subpoenas because people in this administration are not cooperating. CNN senior congressional correspondent Manu Raju is up live for us now. And my goodness, I mean, they, they, uh, let's 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 specifically talk about Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's sounding the alarm there, as were others. You talked to her right after that hearing. What did she say to you? Well, she and other Democrats are raising concerns that this White House does not have adequate safeguards in place in the security clearance process, that they've approved people who should not get security clearances, who have access to the nation's foremost secrets and who are later deemed unsuitable to have access to that same information. Those are the allegations that were raised in that private witness testimony with Trisha Newbold, who the Democrats say is a whistleblower from the White House, raising these serious concerns. Now, Ocasio-Cortez tried to make the case that that what's next for the, this White House, perhaps putting uh, nuclear codes and Instagram direct messages. That's something she said in the hearing. And afterwards, she, I asked her specifically about Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump and whether or not she believes that they should have their security clearances revoked. Well, you know, I, I think it depends on the process. Did they go through the full security clearance process? Were there any flags raised? Um, and, and were there clearances? Um, did, there, did, did that process get overridden through the proper channels? Republicans are saying this is, no, this is not even anywhere near as bad as a Hillary Clinton email situation. What's your response? Well, it's like I said in committee. We're getting reports that, that there's... Uh, communication happening with Saudi officials via WhatsApp. I mean, like I said in there, what's next? Instagram DMs? Like, this is completely insecure. And, uh, and the issue with that, as we saw in the lead up, you know, to, to so many attacks and so many issues, is that when we have insecure channels of communication, anything can get hacked. And if we don't know what what uh, hostile forces know about us, we are, we are putting thousands of lives at risk. Mm -hmm. So I asked her if she wants to see Jared Kushner before her committee to ask questions. She kicked that up to the chairman of the committee, Elijah Cummings. Cummings himself has not said that explicitly, but he does want to talk to a range of White House officials who are aware of the security clearance process. They want to know about it, how these 
problems that they view uh, have being resolved or not being resolved. And as you heard from Republicans earlier, they view this as a reckless attempt by the Democrats to try to smear the White House. They believe that there's really nothing wrong here, that a few places have been overblown. So not much agreement there. But nevertheless, Democrats are the ones who have the subpoena power, and they plan to use that. This is essentially about that whistleblower's boss, a man by the name of Carl Klein. And we know his attorneys have agreed to voluntary testimony. Um, tell me, what is issuing a subpoena going to actually get this committee? Well, I'm a little perplexed about that as well, and I am concerned. Let me say this first. The House Reform and Oversight Committee should absolutely be conducting investigations and hearings into this type of issue. Now, there are separation of powers issues with respect to the constitutional uh, authority of the executive branch to issue clearances, but this is an absolute legitimate uh, issue for this committee to handle with bipartisanship. So I will actually side a little bit with Congressman Jordan to say, why did the committee issue this memo hours after it interviewed one witness? But at the same time, when Congressman Jordan says it should be bipartisan, I say step up to the plate, Congressman and your Republican colleagues. Why are you not joining with the Democrats to investigate whether or not this White House is using politics to override the national security concerns of the United States, which both sides should believe in. Mm. When, you, when you read this memo from this committee, it details this wide range of reasons why these individuals weren't initially cleared, right? So it includes foreign influence, conflicts of interest, uh, concerning personal conduct, financial problems, drug use, and criminal conduct. So, so if you were Carl Klein or his, his attorneys, how do you defend their decisions outside of simply saying, hey, it's a choice the commander in chief can make? So it, it's obviously really difficult not knowing the details of each of these sure. more than two dozen cases. Let me just say this. The memos, as I understand it, these adjudicators, regardless if it's in the White House or any agencies, would receive information on what's called the SF-86, as well as in the background investigations, credit reports, although that's an issue in this particular case, because apparently the White House stopped looking at credit reports in some cases, which I don't understand that decision at all, except for the wrong reasons. But the adjudicators would look at all of this and identify disqualifying conditions and based on that make a recommendation. What we don't know is what were the mitigating conditions. So you gave as an example criminal conduct. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone had a DUI. That could be disqualifying for obvious reasons with alcoholism. That's a specific guideline in the adjudicative guidelines. What would be mitigating? They went to AA. They've abstained mm. drinking for the last eight months. Got it. You know, they've done all sorts of things. We need to know all that. So it's what's called the whole person concept to determine whether a clearance should be granted. What we don't know, based on this whistleblower, who has been very brave, and I commend her because she's done it the right way, is what happened along the way when she wrote these memos and others who said we, den we would recommend denying these individuals. What happened next at Carl Klein's level and elsewhere uh, did they talk to the political appointees who were told you must give these clearances or did they actually render in their judgment that the clearances should be granted? And that is possibly what oversight hearings can look into yeah. with the caveat that all of these people, including Jared and Ivanka, are entitled to privacy. You know, they have privacy protections. But I think these hearings can be done in a way to get at the substantive issues without violating anyone's privacy. Sure, the mitigating information, all those details, that's what these members of Congress Absolutely. on this committee are trying to get their hands on. Mark Zaid, thank you so much for, for laying that out for us so well. I appreciate it. Anytime. Appreciate it.